Hi, I'm Carlin. I'm Ina. We're, We're the, the Jordans. Jordans. We live in North Carolina, and we have three beautiful boys. We love our faith, our family, football, and food. I work full time as a police officer. I am a financial services representative. My wife and I both serve as youth pastors at our local church. And then I have a small business, Cardi K. I'm a licensed esthetician. We have a two-year-old firecracker. He's Carlin Josiah. Carlin was born with sickle cell disease. So the only um, known cure right now for sickle cell disease is a bone marrow transplant. Then when I got pregnant with Biscuit, they tested to see if he was a match, and he was. We have to save 40000 for the transplant that can possibly cure his sickle cell. And my biggest fan and my biggest support is my wife. My biggest fan and my biggest support system is Carlin. There's a saying to divide and conquer, but I don't want to divide and conquer. We just want to conquer together, conquer as a unit. But unfortunately, we are broke. broke. That was a bit long. We did. She said expound. She said expound. Here are the facts. The numbers are massive. Over 45 million people have borrowed over $1.7 trillion in student loan debt. And the COVID-19 pandemic has only made the situation more dire. My name is Dan Rosenswag, and I'm the CEO of the multi-billion dollar company Che. This is my mission. And with the help of my financial expert, Tanya Rapley, we're going to help people who are drowning in extreme debt. <laughs> build a life of financial independence. <laughs> this is the year. It's not going to be easy. I can't do it. But if they do the work, they're going to go from being in the red to becoming the CEOs of their own lives. This is Going From Broke. Hey, Tanya, how are you? Hey, Dan, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I am excited about our couple today. I think we really can help them. So let's get into it. We have Enam and Carlin. They are a lovely couple. They have three sons. Enam is a financial representative at the local credit union as well as an esthetician. And Carlin is a police officer and an ordained minister. So these are the kinds of people you want living next door to you because they can protect you and give you money. <laughs> You got your car? Hey, y'all. What are y'all doing? Say hello. I am at Walgreens. Swipe my card again to get Carlin's medicine. That's kind of part of the astronomical bill we already paying. I'm just glad and feel blessed that we do have it, even though it takes away from paying off debt, but whatever we have to do in order to help aid him and send healthy to get surgery, we're up for it. Good job. Good job. And a lot of the issues they're having, it stemmed from medical debt. So they've already spent an extraordinary amount on his medical costs. And it seems crazy to me that we live in a country where you can't get medical treatment covered by insurance for your child. They've got some issues that most people, I hope, never have to deal with. Yeah. And they're dealing with it as well as they can emotionally. Uh, but we got to help them financially. So maybe we should walk through the numbers. Each month, Carlin and Enam bring in about $7,600, but spend upwards of $11,600, putting them underwater by about $4,000 each month. They are juggling a lot of different types of high interest debt, the most egregious of which are several credit cards with APRs of up to 27%. Their total debt load is over $210,000. It sounds like we're borrowing against our future quite substantially, even though they're living a very modest life. Yeah, this is classic robbing Peter to pay Paul. A lot of what they're doing is what they think they're supposed to be doing instead of what's best for them. They do have money in savings, but it's being saved towards a medical procedure for their two-year-old who has sickle cell. So we've got this pile of money over here, mm -hmm. which is for the most important asset in their life, which is their child. But there may be a better way to finance what they need for their child and put themselves in better financial future. So I think it's time we meet them. What do you think? Yeah. I'm feeling really vulnerable. Like, all your business is just shown to all these strangers. But I'm so excited for the help that that's overtaking the fear that I have. <laughs> Welcome to Going From Broke, probably the show you never thought you'd want to be on. 
but it's a thrill <laughs> to finally meet you. You guys knew we were gonna go through your budget and we were gonna look at your expenses <laughs> and everything. This dining out, really wanna talk about this dining out. Let's just put this in perspective. In one month, you're spending 50% of your mortgage on dining out. I knew that was coming. Like, I, I just wanna go under the table right now. I have to take most of the fault on that. I am not the best cook. You know, I, I have peanut butter jelly, cereal, <laughs> eggs. Honestly, I don't wanna see more than $50 of dining out costs um, or expenses, and that's like where you're reserving it for the night where you just absolutely can't. I'm not gonna sit here and make excuses. It's just for convenience. I do admit that I need to step up with, you know, preparing more of the meals type of thing. Well, it's clear that you all aren't spending recklessly. You know, you own your home. Like, how big is that for you? Because I know that's a large part of the American dream for so many people, owning their home. For me, that is huge. When we signed our name, I felt really good inside because I felt like I finally had something I could plant roots. Like, this is ours. Like, we're kind of starting a legacy for our, our children. Absolutely, same here. We bought it a month before we had baby Carlin, and just to bring him home in our home, it just meant so much to me. The repairs you made on the home exceeded your mortgage payment last month. Mm -hmm. Because we have an older home, and because we don't have the money to just get a whole new air conditioning system, we're having to pay for them to come fix it when it goes out. Same with the plumbing. We can't change our plumbing lines right now, so we're paying a plumber to come out every week. Okay, this house sounds like it's expensive. <laughs> it is expensive. You know, we, we have trained people in this country that the only way, quote unquote, to get to the middle class is you have to go to a four-year college and get a degree. And at some point, you need to own your own home. We need people to reframe that. Owning a home only works if you can get a home at the right price, a mortgage the right rate, and you have to take into consideration what most people don't know or think about, which is the upkeep of a home. So it's not the simple discussion and myth of buying is better than renting. We've been led to believe by a lot of people who make a lot of money off us, if we own this, then we've made it. Well, you don't own the house. The bank owns the house. Yeah. Right now, one of the questions that you want to ask is, is now the time to own a home? Wouldn't it be better to just call somebody when something breaks? And what would a beautiful rental that doesn't put baby Carlin at risk and maybe yeah. even be closer mm -hmm. to the hospital, right? So you don't have to commute that long or pay for hotel bills. Uh-oh, I feel like I tapped into something. You've been, been a fly on the wall. Yeah, we, we've been really praying about that. I've actually told Carlin this week, I think that we should move closer to the hospital, which is an hour and 45 minutes from our house. And the thing is, Carlin didn't want to rent. And I'm like, it makes more sense. But he's like, but we're throwing away money. That's what I've been taught. And that's what I've been told, which I could have been misinformed. The issue isn't what other people say. The issue is what's best for your family. I don't want you to think that your life is measured on whether or not baby Carlin came home to a, a house that has your name on the mortgage, because what matters is that baby Carlin is healthy and baby Carlin isn't left with a pile of debt. Yes. So now you're gonna get some homework. I'm really gonna challenge you to keep those dining out costs down because not only is it ex it's expensive, it's unhealthy too. Bojangles <laughs> is not gonna contribute to our health or our financial goals. But I think one of the things we're gonna do for homework is find out if we did sell it, would we be selling it at a gain or a loss? Even though we're gonna have to pay rent to somebody, you may find out that you're actually putting more money away for your child and your family's future. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have to go through and say, what does it really cost us to own this house for a year? And we're gonna find out mathematically what's best. And then emotionally, you're just gonna have to decide what works for you. Being uncomfortable is okay for us right now. Like we're very okay with being uncomfortable if it means our children and our future is on the side of financial freedom. If you give me my wife, my queen, and my kids are good, we would go live in a box right now and put this house on the market. Like, yep. <laughs> that's how serious we are when it comes to getting out of debt and being financially free. Like, we are serious about this. Your, your arms are too large to live in a box, so we'll make sure you don't end up living in a box either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm, I feel great. I feel great. I feel like they're really invested in seeing us become financially free, and they want it just as bad as we do. Today is Sunday. We're going to meal prep for the week. 
So what I'm doing right now is toasting the rice. Tonight I'll be cooking a recipe that Enon created and um, we're gonna see how it works. Let's see what we got. Mmm. Just hope it tastes good. <laughs> what do you think about daddy's food? No, baby. I am prepping for my next client. Today was really rough for me to get up and leave my family. You know, all he wanted was his mom, but I had clients from eight all the way up to seven tonight. So I kind of just gave him a kiss and ran out the door. I'm so grateful that God has really just blessed my business and that I'm getting booked like crazy. But on the other hand, I just really want to be there for my family. Hey, hey Tanya. Tanya, how are you? I'm good, how are you guys? We're good. I'm loving this color coordination you have going on. <laughs> So I hear you guys have been working. What's been going on? A lot. Yeah. Everything you guys assigned us to do, parts of it was eye-opening, to say the least. Well, last night when we crunched the numbers, first of all, I was shocked about how much we was paid to keep the repairs up. Good gracious, that's $34,000 we're spending a year to live in this house. I that's wish. unreal. The homework really showed me that it might be a good idea just to let it go for a while. I definitely want to own a house, but right now, that's around $2,800 a month. Enam and Carlin thought their home was only costing them around $900 in mortgage payment. But add on the expenses of their utility, home maintenance, home improvement equity loan, and many expensive and unforeseen repairs, and the Jordans calculated their home actually cost them an average of $2,800 a month, which is four times as much as the average rental in their area. That was kind of a gut puncher for me. Yeah, numbers don't lie. A day late, dollar short. Now we know when we should have known yeah, yesterday. Yeah, now you know, and that's a good thing. Now your homework assignments, we're gonna have you look into the rental market and look for jobs closer to the hospital. Okay. And then Enom, our focus is going to be looking for jobs that allow you to stay in the home or work from home so that you can be there for your family. Absolutely. All right. So with Enom and Carlin, they're both youth pastors. They're both committed to the mission. We serve a deserving God, amen? Amen. And I thought it would be wonderful for them to see another faith-based leader who's also focused on debt elimination and empowering others. Hello, Pastor Sores. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Enon and Carlin. So the average white family has a net worth of $170,000, while the average black family has a net worth of $17,000. And it's people like Pastor Sores who are working to equal the playing field and empower others so they can create generational wealth and close that gap. How do you find the balance of giving back and serving in your community, but making sure that you're spending enough time with your wife and your children? That's a great question. I don't believe in balance. I believe in priorities. Priorities tells you what's first, what's second. My sons played high school basketball. I left church on a couple of Sunday mornings to be at their basketball game because my position was the church could always get a new pastor, but my sons can never get a new father. And so it's always been family first. Mm -hmm. Enam and Carlin, I would love for you to share with the pastor your background, where you come from, and why home ownership is an emotional process for you. I grew up in Tampa, Florida. I am one of eight children. Well, both my parents struggled with substance abuse growing up, so we spent a few years in foster care. So we never really had that vision of owning a home or just ownership, period. I cried when I didn't go to school because I knew I was gonna have three me or two meals mandatory, breakfast and lunch. So I didn't know anything about credit. It was always survivor mode. What can we do today in order to provide food for tonight and then we'll worry about tomorrow when it comes? You amaze me because First of all, you are the descendants of people that were not even allowed to buy houses. Black people, since we arrived in this country, have had obstacles and barriers placed in our way on a physical level, on a political level, on an economic level. The other reality is that the foster care system produces more people for the prison system than any other system in the country. And so, you, you are a miracle. The fact that God protected you and spared you the pain of becoming a statistic 
you are a miracle. And so I'm so proud of what you've accomplished because you're a living example of why we tell people it doesn't matter where you start, what matters is where you're finished. I just, he's such a good father and a husband. And he had no template. He just figured it out on his own. And so his life just ministers to me every single day. I'm inspired by you too. Y'all almost have me in tears. I just <laughs> love how you, I love how you love each other. When you say I should have been a statistic, you're right, I should have been. She said I inspire her. This girl inspired me. She is still teaching me stuff daily. Half the times I don't know what I'm doing, but this woman right here <laughs> praying for me and loving me through my mistakes, give me the courage to keep doing it. So it's not on me. I just love y'all. Don't you just love them pastor stories? I oh, just love y'all. I'm moving in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan and Tanya, you guys gave us homework and we're about to complete it. You asked us to check out some rentals near the hospital in Raleigh. The kids are getting packed in the car and we're heading out. So low key, I'm kind of excited to go ahead and do this and see what we find. House number one. Here we go, Dan and Tanya. It's really like suburban, like families. It's not busy, the hustle and bustle. All right, we're at house number two. I rated a seven. I give it a seven as well. On to the next house. House number three. The houses were a little too close together for me. I wasn't in love with it, but I liked it as a rental. So I'm looking at houses, but I'm also still working. So instead of shipping this week, I just decided to deliver it. So working, but still doing homework. We're on to house number four. I gave it an eight because it's brand new, so we don't have to worry about for the kids' safety, but it was $18.95. It's a contender, but it's not top two for me. Our day is done, and we need to get these crying children home. So thank you, Dan and Tanya. We have done our homework. Yes. So we're on our way home from church this Sunday afternoon. Uh, the church was doing something for the kids, a little fellowship lunch, but we opted out of doing that so Carlin wouldn't get sick. You know, I was actually in the shop for a few clients, so I'll be home with the kids. Yes, give that a kiss. Enam and Carlin work hard, and Enam, she has three jobs. She's working at the bank, she has her business, and she's a youth pastor. And so we connected her with Smart Job Search because they're able to help her find other opportunities in the event that this family wants to move. The goal of Smart Job Search is really to help people to find the best and highest paying jobs. Share with me more about what really motivates you from a work standpoint. I'm really big into numbers and I'm really big into the beauty industry. Those are my two passions. I don't want to work three jobs anymore. So I need the salaries of all three jobs into one job. One of the big things for me is um, our family needs really good health insurance, right? My baby goes through a lot. So I would you know, be willing to take a lower paying job if they have really good health insurance. Where we're gonna focus most of your energies during your job search is actually the hidden job market. And so everyone's like, what is that? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, what is that? The hidden job market is any jobs that are filled without being publicly posted. So in the past, I've just gotten jobs based on word of mouth. I haven't really ever like looked online for jobs. And so because I have that resource using smart job search, I feel so much better about not trying to do all this by myself. And now it's time for me to go back to my job. Womp womp. I know he's having a pain crisis. It can happen at any given moment. It just, you don't know when a pain spur may happen. So it may be a rough couple of days or it may be brief and be over in an hour or so. We can only monitor. Good job, all done. In the case of Enam and Carlin, the real challenge for them is the illness of their child and the $40,000 it costs to do the operation. So they have been scrimping and saving to be able to afford this operation. That has put them further into debt. So Tanya and I reached out to Pandemic of Love. What Pandemic of Love does is it crowdsources to help people who have been financially impacted or medically impacted by the pandemic and are really struggling. 
and it gives neighbors a chance to really help neighbors. I'm bringing up a special guest. Her name is Shelly Togelski. Hi. Welcome. I'm Tanya, and this is Enam and Carlin. Hey, how are you? Hi, it's so wonderful to finally meet you. And I wanted to bring you on because Enam and Carlin are so powerful in their community. Even though they have their own debt that they're navigating and their own worries, they're still finding ways to give back to the community. Yeah. That's exactly the key. I mean, I created Pandemic of Love in March of last year based on the concept of mutual aid. And I know that you two, um, Enam and Carlin, know a lot about community organizing and giving back to the community. I always tell Carlin, as soon as my baby gets his cure, I'm gonna find another family to yep. help get their cure Every for time. sickle cell disease. And I just, I always wanna just give back. And I'm glad you were sharing this with us because Man, we're all about being a blessing to somebody, and we don't even have to name a, leave a name. Just bless and just move on. To that point, I actually would really love to um, introduce you to a few of our friends who are on this call. They represent people who have donated, and they even represent families that have been in need before that have been helped. Dan, it's so good to see you. Hey, Tanya, how are you? I'm doing good. Hi, Shelly. Hey, Dan, thanks so much for having us. Hi, guys, how are you? Good, well. how winning. are y'all? We are winning, how are you? I am winning too, because uh, you guys generate the most positive energy. You know, I look forward to listening to you and hearing you, but I think, I think there's some more important people than Tanya and I here today. So, Shelly? So all the people that you see on your screen are individuals who are familiar with your story and the, the financial burden that this has put on your family. And you have done so much, so much good for your community, for the world, for your own family. And we wanted to give back to you. What I'd like for you to do is to, um, if one of you can take your mic off and um, go outside, we actually have something that's waiting for you outside and just bring it back in and don't, don't unwrap it, just bring it in and Come back. Oh, it's a big old package. And so what I'd like you to do is open up the gift that you found outside of your door. I'm scared. All right. I'm gonna risk it. Wow. So we wanted to alleviate the burden that has been placed on your family. Wow. And to help you pay for baby Carlin's surgery so that you can continue to give back to your community. Thank you, Pandemic of Love. Knowing that Thank there's an you. organization that can support people who have lived every day the right way, done the right things, are willing to give up their home to have this child's operation and have to pay down their debt. Mm -hmm. To know there's an organization like Pandemic of Love that can do something like this for such amazing people. Um, thank you. You know, I'm in Carlin. Thank, thank you. M me and Carlin, <clears throat> We always joke and say it's us against the world because we just don't even have people we can ask to help. So we just go so hard every day to make it happen for our kids. And just the fact that y'all were so generous to help our family means everything to me. And I'm just so overwhelmed right now because I just was not expecting. And the first thing I thought about was, I can actually care for my son now because I don't have to work so many jobs. <laughs> you know, when we started this process and I got to know Enam and Carlin, and you know, every time I turn off the camera, I'm just like, <laughs> they don't deserve what's been thrown at them. And so for you to get this, you deserve this reprieve. You deserve to know that people care about you and that you are supported by a community. You two work so hard and you have shown up and done work each step of the way, no matter what was going on. Your baby is sick, you're still showing up. You're still showing up with smiles. You're still doing the work, no excuses. Um, 
I'm, I'm... It's okay, Carlin. I'm, I'm so encouraged to go back and pass it forward and do this to somebody else. I'm so encouraged to knock on somebody else's door one day and just say, this is taken care of. Aw. I, I want to I wanna hug, too. <laughs> um, I hope this allows you to breathe easier, because you deserve to breathe easier. And I just appreciate you. I appreciate the Pandemic of Love team, because this is. Thank you, guys, yeah. so much. Yeah. By the way, I, I want you to understand that with all that love, you better still do your damn homework. <laughs> <laughs> We're committed to the cause. You better believe it. So I'm about to call um, Sheena Williams. She's a realtor that we have worked with in the past and one of my friends. And Dan told us in our homework to see, you know, what our house could be valued for if we decided to sell it. Hey, how are you? Thank, Thank you, you for coming. No problem. I love the fact that this was my first home, but I'm not as attached to the house as I used to be. I'm fine wherever I am as long as my baby can get his cure. I did do a CMA, which is a comparable market analysis. You guys can talk about it and decide where you want to start your list price at. Ready? Mm -hmm. Do what? I think we should bring in Enam and Carlin. Yeah, there they go, matching. I Hello. see the matching couple. Like we knew they would. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you guys. You guys look like you're going out. Are you going out? Yeah, to clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys? Last time we saw you, something special happened. Was that real? Yeah. <laughs> it was. It's real, and what it's for is even more real. What was the most difficult decision you had to make? Letting go. Letting go of the convenience of eating out letting go of the thought of home ownership and just, you know, putting things in perspective. The selling the house is a choice. It's a good business decision at this stage in your life. You're very young. There's still time to own a home if you want to, but on your terms. Absolutely. Right. Walk through what you learned about the house. So we owe about 130. It's value right now between 170 and 180. So if we were to sell it, we would get 40 to 50,000 in equity. Well, what'd you decide to do? Oh, we're selling it. Yeah, we, we told you from the beginning we were serious. <laughs> Absolutely. We met with the realtor on our lunch break today and signed the papers. We're getting a photographer to come out tomorrow, and Woo! we're leaving this weekend so that people can come see the house because our family and us getting out of debt is more important than home ownership to us. Due to Enam's extra work on her soap business, the Jordan's income this month went up to over $10,000. With Carlin stepping up in the kitchen and the family moving to a rental home, they brought their monthly expenses down to $8,000, putting $2,100 into their bank account. Thanks to Pandemic of Love, Enam and Carlin used their own savings to pay off their credit cards, and their debt will continue to drop rapidly after they sell their home. So you have been working. I think what I'm most excited about is when you sell your home, you're going to be debt-free with the exception of your student loans. Is that what you came into this thinking? We came in there into this hoping <laughs> that we'd be debt free, but we never thought it would that be this clear. Real. This yeah. soon, it's yeah. It's real. Yeah, no. And what do you feel now? I, I can't even. I can't even. I just feel a huge like weight just lifted off my shoulder. Like it's like I can breathe. I feel confident. Yes, I can see it. We feel it. Like, yeah. <laughs> because it's like when you feel that confident, you're just like, I don't care where we go, when we go, but I know we can make it. We can survive. Yeah. It's like throwing somebody in the jungle with a knife and they come out with a fur coat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Carlin's going to get healthy and we're going to be financially free. Yeah. And you guys, I always joke. Everyone says, you have the perfect husband. And I always <laughs> say, I do have the perfect husband, but he doesn't cook. And now I can't say that. He's just the perfect husband. <laughs> You've had a great month. Keep it going. But you get one exception that no one else gets. Enam 
I want you to take 25 bucks or 50 bucks and buy him a different color shirt. <laughs> the rest of the money goes to debt. <laughs> The biggest light bulb that went off for me, I was always so focused on saving. And so the money we were saving didn't outweigh the money and in interest that we were racking up. Our house went on the market Saturday, and we have two people interested in buying already, so. It's moving quick. Yep, and so now that we're moving, Carlin picked up teaching at the college so that I could quit the bank and just do car decay and taking care of the kids. We won't have to pay so much money in childcare. And when my baby has his procedure, I'll be home to care for him. If you're looking to build or rebuild your financial life, we've got tools and resources to help. For more on debt, student loans, earning more, spending less, and dozens of other money topics, go to chegg.com backslash going from broke.